Welcome back. We're now going to be continuing in chapter 1, but in this part we're going to be looking at the effects of aging on the cardiovascular system. Keep watching. An individual's ability to sustain a high level of exercise for a prolonged period of time does decrease with age, even with healthy aging. The decline can be slowed by regular exercise, but it cannot be avoided completely. The decline is caused by a weakening of all the functions of the body systems, but our focus here is on the heart. The heart has a pacing system that controls heartbeat and regulates the electrical signals that stimulate the heart's pumping action. Over time, this natural pacemaker loses some of its cells and some of its electrical pathways may get damaged. These changes may result in a slightly slower heart rate at rest and greater susceptibility to abnormal rhythms the most common of which is known as atrial fibrillation. With increasing age, all the structures of the heart become a bit more rigid and the muscles of the left ventricle get thicker. The heart itself may increase in size and the volume of the left ventricle may decline. As a result, the heart may both fill and empty more slowly putting less blood into the circulation. The increase in one's heart rate and cardiac output in response to physical activity is also diminished and one's maximum heart rate declines. The drop in maximum heart rate appears to be greater than the average in sedentary individuals and those with overt cardiovascular disease. In the table you will be able to see how the maximum heart rate may decrease with age. The autonomic nervous system also changes with age. Normally the parasympathetic components set the level of the heart rate at rest, while the sympathetic component governs the heart in anticipation of and in response to physical activity. Normally it's the parasympathetic component that sets the level of heart rate at rest, while the sympathetic component governs the heart in anticipation of and in response to physical activity, stimulating a timely and appropriate increase in blood flow to support that activity. There are continuous adjustments between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems and they result in minute variations in heart rate known as heart rate variability. This means that literally from beat to beat there is a change in your heart rate. And this kind of sensitive regulation is a signature of healthy control of the heart. With increasing age, however, the contribution of the parasympathetic system wanes and the sympathetic system activity increases, even at rest. With it, heart rate variability disappears and the heart's rhythm becomes more prone to disruption. This age-related fall-off in heart rate variability and increase in resting heart rate due to the decline in parasympathetic activity are responsible for 2.6 fold increase in sudden cardiac death. With that in mind we now move to calculating physical activity intensity because that has bearing on fitness particularly as this changes, for instance, as a result of age. The intensity of any physical activity can be calculated 
directly by measuring the amount of oxygen you use for energy metabolism, a factor that is abbreviated as the so-called VO2 or volume of oxygen per minute during exercise. It can also be measured indirectly by measuring your heart rate and using that value as an index of the strain of exertion that is placed on your heart and lungs. So first of all, let's look at the direct measurement of exercise intensity. The amount of energy you use at any given time is proportional to the amount of oxygen your body requires. At rest, as said before, a healthy person only extracts about 3.5 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. And this is known as resting metabolic rate. The energy cost of physical activity can be expressed as a multiple of this resting metabolic rate and is known as metabolic equivalent of task or simply metabolic equivalent abbreviated as MET or MET. An individual of average fitness can achieve about a 12-fold increase in metabolic rate. In other words, 12 METs. In top athletes, this can exceed 20 METs. The table you see here indicates the various METs associated with different levels of activities, finning, swimming, and so on. It records the average metabolic energy requirements for selected physical activities, using METs as the indication. In the table here, you can see the average metabolic energy required for selected physical activities. Light intensity may be less than 3 METs, sleeping 0.9, watching television 1, writing or desk work, typing for instance 1.8, walking about 2.5, and moderate activities going up from 3 to about 6 METs, depending on how quickly you walk, underwater scuba swimming at about 0.8, six knots which would be roughly uh, 1.2 kilometers per hour about five mets surface swimming leisurely around six mets and vigorous activity above six mets jogging around seven and underwater scuba swimming at about two kilometers per hour about 7.5 mets just consider all these implications when you consider your own physical fitness and realize that it is important for you to stay in shape and to be able to escalate or increase your capacity to exercise. In following parts of this first chapter on exercise and the heart in relation to diving, we will be looking at other ways, or in fact, good ways, in which you can maintain fitness and in fact, prepare yourself to a more safe, but also more enjoyable diving. We encourage you to subscribe to this channel, uh, look us up, post your comments, use the Facebook page, Twitter, Call the hotline if you have a health inquiry and support Dan. If you're not a member already, consider joining. If you are a member, please stay on. It's that which makes these recordings and the various other things that Dan does in recreational diving safety possible. And thank you for that.